how New York City's tunnels were monitored. Before traffic cameras became a thing, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey used little cars known as catwalk cars to patrol New York's tunnels. Pictured here is a catwalk car in the Lincoln Tunnel, which connects New Jersey and Manhattan. The catwalk cars has a dedicated track and could reach speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. These zippy little cars were first used in 1955 and were retired in 2011. By that point, catwalk cars were mostly being used for maintenance purposes. The Boombox Decades before Apple introduced the iPod in the early 2000s, companies like General Electric, Panasonic, and Sony produced a device known as the Boombox. These portable music players delivered sound through their large speakers and an amplifier. First introduced in the 1970s, the boombox quickly became a symbol of urban society in the United States. Particularly African Americans and Hispanic youth in large metropolitan areas like New York and Los Angeles. The boombox also became associated with hip-hop culture and played a key role in the rise of hip-hop music. First video game tournament hosted by Atari. Video games have came a long way since the launch of the first consumer video game, Computer Space, in the early 1970s. What was once a nice hobby has now become a highly profitable industry with estimated annual revenues of well over a hundred billion. American video game developer Atari hosted the first ever large scale video game tournament, the Space Invaders Championship in 1980. The tournament attracted over 10,000 registered participants from across the United States helping push competitive gaming into the mainstream. A radio program in the 1940s. Before television was invented, the radio was the dominant home entertainment. During the so-called golden age of radio from the early 1920s to the 1950s, families gathered to listen to the radio in the evening. The invention of the radio gave rise to a host of new entertainment genres, many of which would migrate to television later on. Radio dramas, which relied on dialogue, sound effects, and music to help listeners imagine the story and the characters, enjoyed widespread popularity from the 1930s until the 1960s. Stockholm's gigantic telephone tower. In 1886, Stockholm, the capital of Sweden, had more telephones than any other major city in the world. A year later, Stockholm's Almania Telephone AB ordered the construction of an 80-meter telephone tower in the city, allowing the connection of 5,000 500 telephone lines. By 1913, the tower was made obsolete by the increasing use of the underground cables in the urban area. The tower was severely damaged by a fire in July of 1952 and was demolished a year later on safety grounds. Supersonic airliner flying via the Concord aircraft was expensive, but it could take you to your destination in style. The aircraft also traveled at twice the speed of sound. This means that a traveler from London could easily get to New York in just three hours, much faster than the seven hours it would take to travel between the two cities on any other aircraft. However, the global downturn in air travel 
following the September 11th attacks. The crash of Air France Flight 4590 and the lack of maintenance support led to the aircraft's retirement in 2003. The only other supersonic aircraft to operate commercially was the Soviet built to Polovet TU-144. Detecting threats before radar. Radar has been an absolute game changer in terms of helping defense forces prepare for and respond to an attack by enemies. Thanks to radar, it has become much easier to know the location and speed of an incoming object, whether it's aircraft, ships, or even missiles. Before radar became widely used, defense forces had to rely on listening devices that looked like giant trumpets. These devices, which helped detect approaching aircraft by amplifying sounds in the air, were first used by Britain and France during the First World War. A 1930s Mickey Mouse costume. Mickey Mouse is a cartoon character that was created by Walt Disney in 1928. Mickey, created as a replacement for another Disney character called Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, has since become one of the world's most beloved fictional characters and has long been a popular fixture at Disney's theme parks. The Mickey Mouse costume has gone through several design changes over the years. Earlier versions, like the ones from this 1930 photo, has often been described as creepy or unsettling, a far cry from the friendlier looking costume that we see now. The Texaco Doodlebug In the 1930s, Texaco introduced the Texaco Doodlebug, a futuristic looking tanker truck. While the doodlebugs did what they were supposed to do by carrying gas to and from gas stations, they were also a publicity stunt to modernize Texaco's brand look. The exact number of doodlebugs produced is unknown, though some sources claim that only six units were ever made. Due to its shape, some people at the time so that the doodlebug reminded them of either a pill or a loaf of bread. Electric Powered Street Cleaners In the early 20th century, the streets of the city of Berlin were cleaned with the help of an electric powered heavy duty wagon that roamed the city. Believe it or not, electric powered vehicles have been around a lot longer than you think. Since the 19th century, electric vehicles has been a known mode of transportation, though they were not necessarily the fastest. Electric vehicles eventually fell out of favor as consumers shifted to cheaper, oil-powered cars. It wasn't until decades later that electric cars would become popular again. Early Diving Suits The first individual diving suits were designed in the early 18th century. When ships carrying valuable treasures were often lost to the ocean on dangerous journeys. By the early 20th century, diving suits had become more sophisticated, making it possible for explorers to dive deeper into the ocean. In the 1920s, German company Neulitet and Kunick built metal diving suits that were used to recover gold and silver from the wreck of the SS Egypt, a British ship that sank in the Celtic Sea in 1922. Unveiling an Airship in the early 20th century, airships were believed to be the future of commercial air travel. The U.S. 
Germany, and Britain, developed large airships that were equipped with amenities like lounges, dining areas, and passenger cabins. Unfortunately, a series of high-profile incidents like the 1930 crash of the R-101, the 1933 crash of the USS Akron, and the 1937 Hindenburg disaster led to the decline in the airship's popularity. These days, airships and blimps are mainly used for other purposes like advertising, sightseeing, and research. Vintage Magic Magicians of the old world, such as Harry Houdini, thrilled audience for their world-bending tricks. What is interesting about this time in human history is the way Hadouni took up arms against the spiritualist movement of the time, which had mediums claiming to be in touch with the spirit world. The early 1920s, which was in the wake of the World War I, had many were seeking solace in contacting past loved ones. Houdini pushed back against this and saw it as an exploitation. A Monocycle from the 1930s A monocycle is a motorized version of the monowheel, a single track vehicle that was invented in the late 19th century. Rather than sitting above the wheel as in unicycles, the rider is rather seated either within the wheel or right beside it. Monowheels and monocycles were once thought to be a valuable mode of transportation. But there were several problems inherent in their design that couldn't be overcome. For one, like the lack of stability, visibility issues, and the risk of gerbiling. These days, monowheels and monocycles are generally built and used for entertainment, like at the circus. Fiat's factory in Turin, Italy. The Lingato building in Turin, Italy was inaugurated in 1923 and originally housed a Fiat factory. The cars were built on an assembly line that went up through the building. Finished cars were then tested on the test track at the building's rooftop level. The factory was closed in 1982 and the building was later transformed into a modern complex with two hotels, concert halls, a convention center, offices, and even retail space. In 1997, Fiat moved its administrative headquarters to the building. The Fairchild K-17 Camera The Fairchild K-17 was a large camera designed by Fairchild Camera and Instrument Corporation and manufacturer under license by Fulmer Griflex for the U.S. Air Force. These cameras were mainly used to do aerial photography during the Second World War. A Fairchild K-17 camera with a 12-inch lens cone and full magazine weighed around 55 pounds, while a K-17 with a 24 lens weighed a whopping 75 pounds. Another camera that was used for a similar purpose in the 1940s was the Kodiak K-24. Riding the Rotor The Rotor is in an amusement park ride that was designed and patented by Ernest Hofsmetter, a German engineer in the late 1940s. The ride is a large barrel that is rotated at 33 revolutions per minute. Once the barrel reaches its full speed, the floor retracts, leaving the riders stuck to the wall due to the force. 
Rotors have been built at numerous amusement parks in Australia and the U.S. since the 1950s, including this one at Kenny Wood in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. This photo was taken in 1955. Michelin Man on Tour Michelin Man is the official mascot of the French tire manufacturing company, Michelin. First unveiled in the public in 1898, Michelin was created by French cartoonist Marius Rossellino, also known as O'Gallop. This photo shows Michelin on tour in 1926, before televisions became common and billboards were a rare sight outside of city centers. Businesses like Michelin would go on tour to advertise their product. Mascots like Michelin were an integral part of the tour, often to attract young children's attention. Two daredevils play tennis. This photo of two people playing tennis on the wings of an airplane may seem fake, but this did happen. Two daredevils, Gladys Roy and Ivan Unger, performed this stunt 3,280 feet above Los Angeles in November of 1925. Both Roy and Unger were wing walkers or barnstormers who regularly performed similar stunts at various events across the United States. This particular stunt was performed on the wings of a Curtis J.N. Jenny plane piloted by Jack Tomic, the inner auto scooter. The micro car, the smallest type of car, first appeared on the streets of Europe after the Second World War. Micro cars typically had three or four wheels and were usually equipped with an engine that was smaller than 700 cc. Micro cars quickly became popular across Europe as they were cheap and had greater fuel efficiency than regular cars. Shown here is the Inter Auto Scooter a micro car that was unveiled to the public at the 1953 Paris Motor Show. The Inter was built by Syncam, a state-owned French aircraft manufacturer based in Lyon. Photo editing in the 1860s. In 1860, then presidential candidate Abraham Lincoln had a problem. Many voters had no idea what he looked like, and the media and his politician opponents often made fun of his looks, describing him as vulgar, uneducated, and downright just gross in appearance. As a solution, he turned to photographer Matthew Brady to manipulate his photo that would later be distributed to the public. Following Lincoln's death in 1865, portrait painter Thomas Hicks superimposed the late president's head onto the body of John C. Calhoun and created a print. For a century, no one noticed that the print was fake. An old school arcade. Before home video game consoles took off, gamers flocked to amusement arcades where people played arcade games including video games, pinball machines, redemption games, electromagnetical games, claw machines, billiards, air hockey, and more. Amusement arcades trace their origins to penny arcades, a venue of coin-operated devices for entertainment. 
that began to emerge in the early 1900s. Massively popular video games like Space Invaders, Galaxian, and Pac-Man were introduced to arcades in the late 1970s to the early 1980s, a period that would later be dubbed as the golden era of arcade video games. An old library tool. Before the internet, the library was everyone's go-to place for research. People would spend countless hours browsing the shelves and searching for books, journals, and magazines to find the information they needed. This 300-year-old library tool on display in Mexico allows its users to keep multiple books open all at once, much like today's internet browsers. Anyone using it could easily switch between tabs, saving them from the hassle of having to shuffle through multiple volumes at different tables. Air travel attire. Nowadays, most of us slap on a pair of sweats or leggings and hustle out the door to go through the long pre-flight process that we've all become accustomed to. However, before air travel was standard during the golden age of commercial aviation, people dressed to the nines for their travel. Taking a flight was a big deal and was viewed as luxury. The glitz and glamour were a part of the experience, with air hostesses while stock bar carts and meals served on fine china. Travel by ship. Before planes, people traveled by ships. During the end of the 19th century, Many immigrants traveled on iron-hulled steamships to the Ellis Islands port to the United States. These transatlantic liners would carry 1,900 people, with about 500 of those being employees, and about 1,100 steerage passengers. The rest were cabin-class passengers. Steerage was smelly noisy, stuffy, and offered limited privacy. For first-class passengers, it was a luxurious experience with saloons, ballrooms, and top-quality dining. Public telephone booths. Prior to most everyone in modern civilization having a cell phone at their fingertips, phone booths were a standard part of the cityscape. To make a call, you inserted your coin and dialed your desired call through the rotary dial. It was standard practice to wait your turn as someone made their call on their way to work or to catch the bus. It is hard to imagine in a world that is way more tailored to our specific needs, isn't it? Old World Box called Penny Farthing. Penny farthings were the first machine to be called a bicycle and were popular during the 1870s and 1880s. The large front wheel provided high speeds since every rotation of leg gave considerable distance and comfort owing to the large wheel providing greater shock absorption. The name hails from the British penny and farthing coins and the differing sizes of the two coins. Although the trend of the penny farthing bicycles was short-lived, it did become a staple of the Victorian era. Horse buggy as the main mode of transportation. In today's modern world, high-performance cars can have upwards 700 horsepower or more. However, in the 1800s, it was just a few horses and a buggy uh -huh, as the primary needs of transportation. Transporting people and goods was a costly feat in the 19th century as animals required large quantities of food and water and the roads 
were, let's face it, bumpy dirt roads. Now, contrast that with the trailer full of horses we are now able to haul. The first New York Fashion Week. The first ever New York Fashion Week took place in 1943 and took place with the nearing of World War II. So fashion shows had been a part of culture and society, the New York Fashion Week was the first of its kind in grandeur and scale. The legacy that followed would come to represent style and fashion for decades to come and marks social illegitimism on an international scale. Corsets. They would typically be worn as under or outer wear in an effort to raise and shape the breast. Tighten the midriff, support the back, and make the women stand up straight. The earliest known corsets appeared in the 16th century and have been used for centuries within tribes within the Caucasus. But we mostly think of corsets as garments worn by the English. Contrast corsets with the shapewear that we have today, and it certainly shows the way we've evolved and also how we have stayed the same. The very first NASCAR race. The first NASCAR race took place on February 21st, 1949 at the Charlotte Speedway in North Carolina. There were about 13,000 fans on hand watching the 200 lap race. NASCAR's earliest races featured the pre-World War II models of the 1939 Ford Coupe and were raced on dirt roads with what may be considered a sparse crowd compared to first today. First rocket from Cape Canaveral. In July of 1950, NASA launched their first rocket from Cape Canaveral, Florida. At the first time, the rocket reached a new record height and went even higher than the current orbit of the International Space Station. The rocket was named Bumper 2, and it would be the first of many rockets to launch from Cape Canaveral. But, however, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have on old world photos today. Thank y'all for watching. Please like for more videos. Until next time, Godspeed.